Over the past few years, electric mountain bikes have changed their look radically. If you look back at like the 2014, 2015, even 2016 bikes, they, they look pretty damn ugly. This is an absolute stunner. It is one of the, if not the most beautiful looking electric mountain bike I've ever seen. And this is the Focus Jam Squared 9.9. .9. Now, the unique thing about this one is it uses the Shimano E8000 motor, but a smaller in-tube battery. It uses a 378 watt hour battery in the carbon frame. And that helps it maintain this really svelte kind of slimline look to it. And get this, the bike weighs just 20.6 kilograms, which for a electric mountain bike is, you know, pretty lightweight. And when you start hitting that, like close to 20 and below 20, your handling of your e-bike starts to feel pretty different to like a 24, 25 kilo e-bike. And the thing with this bike is it's not even like a super lightweight build. It's got regular aluminium wheels, aluminium like components, bars and all that stuff and XT drivetrain. So it's not like a super exotic build, but because of the lightweight Shimano Intu battery, which is, like I said, 378 watt hours, you can go out and I reckon you can have like a, a good hour, 90 minute blast on this bike and um, maybe use all that battery up. Now they do give you when you buy the bike, which is six and a half grand. So it's, it's not like, it's, it's not cheap. It's a lot of money, but they do give you a battery that goes on the tube. If you do want to go for a, a longer ride, you've got an option there. Um, and the thing with this bike is that Focus do this in two different motor configurations. So they do one with the Bosch motor and the big 625 watt hour battery that I've already done a video on. So go check that out if you're interested in it. Essentially, it's the same bike with the uh, Bosch motor and big battery. But if you want something light, lively and stunning looks, check this out like come over and what we'll do is we'll go around the bike and look at it in a bit more detail this carbon frame's like a teal kind of blue and it just pops man i mean it looks so so good um a lot of people don't necessarily like tan wall tires but i think they look really good i've been considering popping them on my my own bike i really like the look of them the only thing is you can only get them in one compound at the moment you can't get them in the uh, like the max terra the 3c so that's the only thing that's stopping me getting them but i think they look really nice and paired with these kind of tan grips boom focus of knocked this out of the park um okay so what have we got on here so we've got fox factory 36 forks 150 we've got a 29er wheel at the front 27.5 plus at the back so the front is a dt swiss 29 inch rim with this maxis minion dhf and at the rear it's running a um, recon plus so with the recon um, the recon is not the grippiest tire in terms of like the uh, knobs on the sidewall but it's a, it's good for rolling speed it's good for like cross country and trail stuff and on the rear actually it's um, not going to be too bad, but um, you're not going to get like the side grip that you get on something like a DHR, but it's a little bit lighter. Probably suits this style of bike, to be fair. Um, Shimano motor is the E8000 motor, and it's really tightly integrated in there. And just up here, you've got the 378 watt hour internal battery that goes in the carbon frame. Um, you can't take it out because it's uh, just kind of made to be totally lightweight this bike so uh, a lot of the bikes that are coming out now the lightweight ones have non-removable internal batteries there uh, personally to me i'm not actually bothered about not being able to move remove the batteries but um, i know a lot of people like to or need to charge their batteries inside this down tube is is really slim like i said it's uh honestly like <sighs> I know, I know e-bikes have changed massively over the past few years, but no one would know. Just looking at it from a glance that this is an e-bike, it is so slim. And the power button just up here, so you can uh, turn that on. And then if you do want to put that additional tech pack on for a longer ride, it goes on there. Um, it is gonna add 
weight quite high up. That's the only thing with the tech pack that I've noticed. It is quite big and quite heavy. So I've not used it with the tech pack on. I've just been ripping around with this super lightweight configuration that it's in now. Shimano XT shifters. I uh, love the XT stuff, um, shifts brilliantly. And uh, XT brakes, again, just really, really good. Probably something I'd spec if I was building a bike up, I would quite possibly go for the uh, XT brakes and um, drivetrain, because it just works really well. The shifting is super crisp and um, instant, near instant. Race face, turbine bars. And again, like I said, this is not built up to be a super lightweight bike. It is lightweight just by default. But if you put, if you wanted to go for a super lightweight build, a set of carbon rims, carbon bar, uh, that would save, I don't know, 600 grams maybe, half a kilo. So then you're thinking, you know, this is close to a 20 kilo bike. Oh, it just looks so sweet, man. It looks stunning absolutely stunning right so fox factory 36 decent burly fork super stiff for an e-bike and uh, really great performer little rubberized kind of bash plate on the bottom just feels like it's going to absorb some of that noise and some of those impacts fox factory shock dps uh, no piggyback on here um, Honestly, I've used piggyback shocks and they're really good if you are on long descents when the oil starts to heat up and it loses its performance. So depending on what you're going to use it for, but this performs really well where I've been riding it. XT cranks, they don't do an XL and the large is pretty compact. So I'm one meter 91, six foot three. I am too, too big for it, too tall. Um, it's a shame that you don't do an XL. So this is gonna suit smaller riders. They only do uh, two frame sizes, like a medium and a large. When it's off, it pedals remarkably well. I think a lot of it's down to the, you know, the pretty lightweight, low rolling resistance uh, recon at the back um, and the overall lightweight of the bike. But I haven't tested this like on, on like Malia tracks. I, I think that because the geometry, it's only a 445 mil reach and I'm six foot three, I think it would be a little bit scary. So I've just been blasting around on local trails and riding it off. I've not even turned it on to come and do this little video here. I've just been riding around with it turned off and it, it rides really well, really well with it powered off. So we've got an XT cassette, XT rear mech and uh, Kashima Fox transfer, Kashima dropper with a neat little saddle on the top. And just checking out the cockpit, we've got the nice little neat Shimano display just there that's the e8000 the color color display and then the real real neat shimano e7000 shifters which are um, really low profile work really well and the little dropper under there and these race faced hand grips so oh power on button is just on here so overall a sweet lightweight trail ripper <laughs> So I gotta be honest with you, when I first started riding or heard about the concept of lightweight, low powered e-bikes, I kind of thought, what's the point? And I wasn't the biggest fan, but after riding a few of them, I'm starting to get it. Not everybody wants a 600 or 700 watt hour battery because not everyone goes on rides that are four, five, six hours long. For a lot of people, a lightweight e-bike with a smaller battery that can allow you to ride for an hour, a couple of hours maybe, will be enough. And because this bike is so lightweight, with it turned off, there's very little resistance from the motor and it's easy to maneuver with it turned off because it weighs like just over 20, 20 and a half kilos. So I'm starting to get it, right? We've got these regular electric mountain bikes that are like 22, 24 kilos. And that's like the, the main market segment. And then you've got the big, powerful e-bikes that are maybe 27, 28 kilos, but big batteries, huge, powerful motors. And that is for a group of people too. But this new lightweight category is um, emergent and it's good fun, I'm telling you. I've really enjoyed riding the lightweight e-bikes that I've got at the moment. And don't forget, this isn't lightweight, low power. This is lightweight, full power. So you've got the Shimano motor in there, which is uh, 
a full powered electric mountain bike motor, which is, um, it's, it's quick, man. It, it climbs really well. So this kind of concept, I see as growing massively over the next few years. So it'll be really interesting to see where it goes and where the manufacturers go and where the innovation comes. And yeah, it's, um, it's, it's an interesting concept for sure. So what do you think about this? Is this something that you would ride? Is it something that you would consider? What do you think about lightweight electric mountain bikes? Lower powered electric mountain bikes. This is full power, but there are lower power options as well. Let me know in the comments. So if you like this kind of content, let me know with a thumbs up because it really helps me understand what people like. And if you want to see weekly electric mountain bike content, subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I'll see you soon.